Well, hey guys, what's up? I hope your week is going well. I'm just hydrating here with a little water. I have a teaspoon of that pure rose nectar. This is my glitter Starbucks cup that I got for Christmas, so I'm enjoying drinking out of that. But sensitive skin folks out there, those of you who, who always find that product sting or burn, I have a skincare line that I'm going to review for you guys today that I'm kind of excited to talk about. It is the new, newer uh, Burt's Bees Sensitive line. But sensitive skin is a syndrome of more or less unpleasant sensations in response to stimuli that come in contact with the skin that are otherwise normally not a problem. And sensitive skin presents kind of with subjective symptoms like burning, stinging, tingling in the absence of any, oftentimes in the absence of classical findings of any specific diagnosis or any predictability in terms of what ingredients they are that are causing these symptoms or in the absence of any actual visible signs of of skin irritation. It's, it's nebulous. There's not, I'm telling you, there's not an ingredient or list of ingredients or, or, or product that it's going to be a guarantee. There's no predictability to it. Particularly in terms of CeraVe, you guys will ask me, you're like, well, I switched from this particular cleanser by CeraVe to that one and it stings, it irritates. Why is that? Can't give you an answer. Cannot give you an answer. Incredibly nebulous and Suffice it to say that what's irritating to one person and stings and burns is going to be fine for a lot of other people. So it's, it's challenging. And that is one of the reasons why I review several products on here because I know as a dermatologist that one face wash and one face cream that I have and think is fantastic has a great ingredient profile, uh, few ingredients, few ingredients that are commonly uh, associated with irritation and allergies. Somebody out there is going to have issue with it regardless. So it's important for me to review a lot of products. You know, the products that I typically recommend and that most dermatologists recommend that are marketed towards sensitive skin and that are free of these ingredients, they can still cause irritation for, particularly for people with rosacea, but just, you know, consumers in general can still have problems with them. Burt's Bees products are, you know, kind of all natural. They make use of plant-derived ingredients. And I'm always a little apprehensive when it comes to plant-derived ingredients because they can cause a lot of problems for people particularly in terms of development of sensitivity to the ingredients and subsequent allergic contact dermatitis. So I'm always really conservative in my thought process about, about natural things. In dermatology, we know that all that is natural is not safe and or effective. But the study I'm gonna tell you guys about looking at these products specifically really caught my attention for a few reasons. Uh, it really challenges, uh, challenged the concept that, you know, be, be careful in recommending natural skincare products. They can, can cause problems for people. This is a study that looked at 120 individuals who were identified as having in clinic, as having rosacea, eczema, or cosmetic sensitivities. And the trial um, split the group up and the, a portion of the group got a, a skincare routine that involved using the new Burt's Bees sensitive facial cleanser um, to wash the face and using um, both the daily moisturizing cream sensitive in the daytime. And then they used the, um, the night cream at nighttime. And then the other, the other group got uh, a dermatologist recommended skincare routine that we frequently recommend, and that is Cetaphil Gentle Cleanser and Cetaphil Moisturizing Cream. So this study was a double blind randomized control trial. What that means is that by being double blinded, the subjects didn't know if they were getting Burt's Bees or they were getting Cetaphil. The subjects didn't know, and then the other part of the blinding is that the investigators evaluating the subjects through the course of the study did not know whether the subjects were getting Burt's Bees or, or the Cetaphil products. So it was double blinded, and it was randomized, meaning that uh, it was random who got what products. Um, not, not uh, you know, they couldn't pick. So there was no, that help, those factors help remove some bias. Investigator bias, investigators more, may be more biased to see things they, they think they should see. 
Um, and consume and, and subjects may be biased into thinking that, oh, I'm using something all natural, this is better, and I feel better. Um, and it's interesting, the Burt's Bees, uh, subjects eating the Bur using the Burt's Bees product showed a st statistically improved uh, investigator overall um, rating in their skin appearance. They had, on average, 34% uh, improvement in visual, in kind of their visual appearance of the skin, the tactile um, tactile smoothness, how smooth their skin was, and just radiance. So both the investigator and I believe the subjects felt like the skin looked better. This is interesting. At best, Cetaphil gave rise to an 11% improvement in, in the appearance of the skin, and that was only in the people with eczema. So only, only some of the people with eczema had better looking skin after using Cetaphil. Uh, and the other groups did not. Um, but everybody in the Burt's Bees group looked fantastic afterwards, at least using this rating system that they came up with and kind of the, kind of the subjects uh, reported uh, benefit. And in addition to that, uh, both products uh, resulted, both, both Burt's Bees and Cetaphil, um, both showed an improvement in trans epidermal water loss. So that's really interesting. The study suggests that perhaps the Burt's Bees line is more is, is easy to tolerate in people with sensitive skin, and it is effective and more effective than Cetaphil potentially, uh, improving the at least the appearance. Both lines improve transepidermal water loss. So you know that's interesting. It suggests that Burt's Bees is well tolerated in people with sensitive skin. So. That study, it was compelling to me and that made me feel a little bit more comfortable being able to recommend these products to you guys out there who may be struggling with sensitive skin and eczema. I'm not quite there yet in recommending it clinically. It is not my first line. I still go with Vanny Cream for people with sensitive skin or, Cetaphil, or CeraVe, excuse me. Uh, but <laughs> Cetaphil, you guys know, um, I... Well, you know, when I first started as a dermatologist, I always recommended Cetaphil because that's what I was taught to recommend. And then I started using Cetaphil myself and I had a really hard time finding the face wash to be useful. But I've never had a problem personally as a consumer with the Cetaphil moisturizers. But this study suggests they are not as great at making your skin look good as maybe Burt's Bees. So yeah, that study caught my attention. I purchased the products myself and I wanted to give them a try. I thought you guys would be interested in them. And since they, there is actually some objective data comparing Burt's Bees to Cetaphil, I thought it was interesting to share with you guys. So a little bit about the <clears throat> sensitive facial cleanser. All of their products actually in this line, the ingredients are pretty pretty similar from product to product. There's not a lot of variability. Um, but the cleanser is nice. It is a soap-free cleanser, meaning it doesn't have any, any detergents that can really disrupt the skin barrier, which is important for people with sensitive skin. Using kind of a non-soap non non cleanser is a good way to go. <clears throat> this makes use of sunflower seed oil, coconut oil, and beeswax. Um, it's kind of the cleansing ingredients as well as cocoa butter and I believe glycerin as well. That can help to break up dirt and and makeup and sunscreen, kind of like, kind of like in a cold cream approach, kind of like a cold cream approach using using kind of a non-soap approach, basically. So no 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 detergents. It has a plant-derived surfactant in it called soap bark, and soap bark is actually in, in sometimes in shampoos and a lot of natural skincare products. It is a natural surfactant. It does a phenomenal job lathering. So washing my face with this is really nice. It makes a nice creamy lather. Soap bark, however, is not particularly a fantastic surfactant at actually cleansing the skin, but it does make a very nice lather. So it imparts a nice aesthetic property to the cleanser, but it's not necessarily super effective. But they have, they have the sunflower seed oil and the coconut oil and beeswax as well as um, Glycerin and uh, acetyl alcohol also can function to help, uh, you know, remove dirt and oil as well. Uh, so th those are good. Personally, I really enjoyed this cleanser. As a consumer, I thought it was super gentle. I love that lather from the soap bark. Um, you know, I don't have sensitive skin or rosacea or um, I do have eczema, but I don't have problems with eczema on my face. And I'm able to tolerate a lot on my face. This did not burn or sting whatsoever. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It does a fantastic job taking off mascara. That is pretty much the only really eye makeup that I wear. I was able to get the masca my mascara off with this without a pre-oil cleanse. The mascara I'm currently using is not water waterproof, so I have not tried it with waterproof mascara. Um, it also does a 
good job removing my water resistant sunscreen and my tinted water resistant sunscreens off of my face. Um, so that all comes off very gently without a pre oil cleanse. So it is it is a it is a good cleanser in that in that regard. But if you're somebody who wears heavy makeup um, foundation, I don't I'm not confident this is going to take off your your makeup. I think you're going to need a pre a pre step either with an uh, oil cleanser or if you want to use a micellar water, that, that's your choice. It's not my preference, um, but uh, I would just recommend that you, then, that you then use like the cleanser, for example, obviously to, to wash that residue off. Um, anytime you use a makeup remover, whether it be a wipe, a micellar water, you really want to, or, or an oil, you really want to wash off that that residue because it leaves behind preservatives and uh, ingredients that can be very irritating. Um, and frankly, doesn't do a good enough job taking off the makeup by itself. You need the second step. You really do. Um, that, you know, you really do need the second step. Um, okay, and then as far as the ingredients though, it also has, uh, uh, you know, I think I mentioned it has witch hazel and aloe in it and coconut oil. These three ingredients, you know, some people can really be bothered by them. Witch hazel can be irritating to certain people. Uh, not the people in this study, apparently. Aloe can also end up being irritating. Aloe contains compounds known as lignans, which are not dangerous, but they are penetration enhancers. So they can increase, increase penetration of ingredients, make things more, more irritating to you. Uh, coconut oil can be, can flare some people's acne. So, uh, you know, this, like I said, this comes off of the skin, does it comes off pretty easily. Uh, with water, so I didn't feel like I had an oily re residue left behind. But if you're really acne prone, you find that you have issues with products containing coconut oil, or you are allergic to like cocomide uh, derivatives. I think this has some coconut, um, some alkyl glucosides that are derived from coconuts. You might have issue with this cleanser. So those would be people to avoid this. This also contains beeswax, as do all Burt's Bees products. So those of you who who have issues with, um, a, a, that's not vegan, but those of you who have it, issues with propolis, if you're allergic to propolis, that is, that is from bees, you might have issues with beeswax. That can be a problem sometimes. Uh, but it is nice, it helps to dissolve some of the dirt and stuff in there, so not a problem. Um, you know, beetroot extract made its way into here. Uh, you know, I when I reviewed, um, when I reviewed uh, Crave Beauty's uh, Beat the Sun, sunscreen, I was kind of puzzled as to the inclusion of beetroot other than it is a source of antioxidants. Um, so here it is in Burt's Bees products as well. So it's making an appearance here. Again, I don't, you know, there's not, I don't see a lot of problems with it, but I also don't see a lot of supporting evidence for its use. Uh, so that's in there. Um, but I think, and also, this also has, in addition to the cotton flower extract, it also has rice extract, which is very moisturizing. But I think the ingredients that are going to cause problems for people, if any, are going to be either the coconut oil, the beeswax, the witch hazel, or the aloe. All right, but next up, I'm kind of baffled by these two next products that I tried, because both of these were used in the study. I, I only bought the stuff that was used in the study. There are two other products, which I'll talk about, that were not used in the study, and I didn't buy, and I don't recommend, and I'll talk about why. But... Um, they used the night cream intensive in the study at nighttime and they used the daily moisturizing cream in the daytime. Um, I enjoyed both of these products. I've got to tell you guys, I, as far as I can tell, they are not strikingly different other than the night cream comes in a jar and the day cream comes in in a pump. And I actually like the pump much better. We've talked about the issues with jar packaging before. No, it's not an issue of contamination. It's more of an issue of convenience. And nobody, you know, people just don't like having to unscrew a jar and dip their fingers in. You guys don't like it. It gets on my nerves too. I tend to drop things and lose product. So the pump of the day cream is fantastic. It's just like Dr. Sam's Flawless Moisturizer Pump. I love this packaging. Um, these are both uh, $15 uh, for, what is this, 1.8 ounces. So same price, same amount. Honestly, I gotta tell you guys, I could not tell much, uh, any difference between the two products. If you look very carefully at the ingredient list, the night cream, the night cream has uh, kaolin listed a little bit higher. Kaolin is a thickening agent. So this just has, this just is intended to have a slightly thicker consistency. But as a consumer, I could not tell the difference between these two products. I think they are identical. Um, they both are super, super lightweight. Uh, went on like a dream, but 
uh, you know, very hydrating, uh, nice emolliency, but not super occlusive. So not a heavy moisturizer at all. In the dead of winter, this is not enough of a moisturizer for me. Even though I live in Houston, it's super humid. I still have kind of arid, arid, and arid conditions, dry conditions indoors with with indoor heating. So this is not enough of a moisturizer for me during in the winter time. Um, but in the summer, I'm definitely coming back to this. I really liked it. Very lightweight, very easy to tolerate, um, and not greasy um, whatsoever. Did not sting but just not super occlusive at slowing down trans epidermal water loss. You can see it's kind of, it's kind of more liquidy um, and less occlusive. It's, a lot of it has to do with its consistency feels a lot more liquidy because it has fewer thickeners added to it um, and relies more on natural compounds that in and of themselves, the cotton extract, for example, acts as kind of a thickener, so they don't add synthetic thickeners. Um, like many other products do. The moisturizing cream also, um, as far as ingredients, again, the ingredients, the, the, the ingredients in both moisturizers are pretty much the same. They both have sunflower seed oil, they both have the cotton flower extract, and they both have shea butter, which is a phenomenal moisturizing ingredient, functions as the occlusive in this, um, and it's good. But like I said, I, aside from the packaging and knowing that Kaolin is a little bit, you know, is listed higher on the ingredient list, and therefore probably, you know, this is, technically a little thicker. They're, they're identical. I swear they are identical. All right, so that is my experience personally as a consumer using the three products. Like them all, had no issue with them. Um, but uh, the other two products that they contain, that they have that were not used in the study and I don't recommend, they of course have an eye cream. Everybody has to have an eye cream. Why? Because eye creams sell like, like wildfire. Um, I don't recommend the eye cream. It is the same price as the the daily cream and the night cream, both of which can be used around the eyes just fine. It is the same same price, but only half an ounce. So $15 for half an ounce, so pretty expensive. And the, But the main reason I don't recommend it is unlike those two products, it contains olive oil, which is not a bad ingredient, but olive oil in moisturizers, we actually have evidence is not a fantastic moisturizing ingredient. You know, it has been only reported to increase trans epidermal water loss. It doesn't actually seem, at least from the studies, to be a fantastic moisturizing ingredient. But the other reason I don't recommend it is unlike the other products, it contains castor oil. Castor oil is very popular in skincare products and and you know consumers love it believe that it helps their hair etc the only objective information I can provide you about castor oil is that it is associated with the development of allergic contact dermatitis and can be very irritating and also side note about the hair thing um, you know it's not that I dismiss you guys observing that it just has not been reported in the medical literature to to cause hair growth um, there are only case reports of people developing bad scalp dermatitis and, and, and irritant contact dermatitis from, from castor oil, so I, I recommend avoiding it, particularly if you have sensitive skin and you're pursuing, pursuing this line. I, I don't recommend the eye cream. Expensive, olive oil, which is you know, technically not a great moisturizing ingredient, and castor oil. And the other product, that, and it's expensive, I, I said that already. The other product I don't recommend are the wipes, the makeup wipes. wipes. I don't recommend makeup wipes because any makeup wipe, it's not anything specific about these. I don't recommend makeup wipes because of, of a few reasons. First of all, they, they do leave behind a residue. So if you use them, I know they're popular, if you use them, I definitely recommend that you wash your face afterwards. You want to remove that residue. The residue contains preservatives and things that left on the skin, particularly after, after, after rubbing the skin. High, uh, not high, but they're, they're only reported to cause irritant and allergic contact dermatitis. And honestly, in my experience, they don't actually take the makeup off particularly well. Uh, particularly eye makeup and that sort of thing. And you know, depending on what your makeup routine is and how you remove the makeup, personally, for me and my minimal makeup, this is all you need. So I don't think the wipes are worth it, but I can see in certain situations you guys gravitate towards wipes. Um, just bear in mind what I told you, how they can, they can cause problems. But the wipes themselves, I mean, they, there are preservatives in the wipes like phenoxyethanol, not a dangerous ingredient, but can cause irritation and problems for people. So I don't recommend the wipes and would not use them. The wipes and the eye cream were not used, were also not used in the study. So I can't confidently, as confidently recommend those products to you guys. 
these products are going to be worth it to you or you, you the people I think will get along well with these are people with sensitive skin who also are a little bit oily, oily prone. People with sensitive skin who have very, very dry skin, mature skin, need a more intense moisturizer. I don't think this is going to be enough for you, honestly, the moisturizers that Burt's Bees has come out with. In order to get barrier restoration, I just don't think that they are as occlusive as others. But you may like that. You may find that occlusive moisturizers are too irritating for you and you want something more lightweight, uh, in which case you will like you will like both of the moisturizers. They are both more or less the same. Um, and the facial cleanser is, is a good one. I have no issue with this and plan to continue using it. I plan to come back to the moisturizers probably in the summertime. Um, and so, you know, I can confidently say that at least in that study, it seems like people with rosacea tolerate this just fine. It seems like people with eczema tolerate this just fine. And it seems like people who have hyper irritable skin tolerate these just fine. So, you know, I, I feel a little more comfortable saying probably okay, but again, can never, you know, there's going to be somebody out there who will find these who will find that these sting. There, there will inevitably that be that person. But for those of you who don't get along with CeraVe and all the other products, this might be an option for you, and I think it's good. All right, about the moisturizers, though. I honestly, you know, I think this one is, just pick this one, in my opinion, because this one, you've got this annoying jar package. They're the same price. They're basically the same product. Um, aside from this one is, you know, technically a little bit thicker. But if I were you guys, I would, I would honestly just plump down 25 bucks if you want these products and get the face wash and the moisturizer. Um, and for my routine, I, you know, I only wash my face once a day. I don't wash it at night. So I'm only, I would only, for, for me, for a routine, for using these products, I would only use the face wash at night like I normally do. I'll face wash once a day. And I would only use this at night because Burt does not have a sunscreen. So for me and for you guys, your sunscreen is your daily moisturizer, or you know, it, it really should be. This is not this is not going to add anything to the moisture moisturizing properties of your sunscreen. And, you know, my sunscreen, my Elta MD UV Sport, is my daytime moisturizer. Sunscreens are moisturizers for the in general, unless you're using an, a, a gel sunscreen that's drying and has alcohols in it. Most sunscreens are in a lotion or cream vehicles, which are moisturizers. So you don't really need a separate one. Uh, it's just more stuff to put on your face. If you have sensitive skin, you want to minimize the number of products that you put on your face. So you're probably only going to end up using this at nighttime. So I would just say, you know, you don't need you don't need two nighttime creams, one labeled day and one labeled night which are basically the same thing. So I would just go for the face wash and, and the daily moisturizing cream. But yeah, really have enjoyed these three. Like I said, did not go after the eye cream or wipes, nor do I recommend for the reasons I explained. Uh, but I'm excited about this. You know, I've been ragging on Burt's Bees for years now and telling people don't use Burt's Bees, terrible products, tons of fragrance, you know, lots of irritant and allergic contact dermatitis, particularly the lip balms. The lip balms are a bugaboo. Um, you know, people get terrible chelitis from Burt's Bees lip balms, um, really an issue. And, you know, I applaud the company. They appear to have, you know, taken back, taken some of the feedback, um, you know, from somebody and really made some good products that are in fact dermatologist tested. Um, so that that's great. Uh, one other note though about the study that you guys may wanna know, um, the researchers uh, are, in fact, consultants for Burt's Bees, okay? But what you need to understand, uh, and what gives me a little bit more confidence in this study, that, that is a conflict of interest, right? Um, see, in research and in science, uh, authors are required to disclose financial conflict, potential financial conflicts of interest, like being a consultant for Burt's Bees, and both of the researchers were. But when you look at how the study was done, it was double blinded. So the researchers had no idea who was getting Burt's Bees and who was not. And the subjects did not know who was getting Burt's Bees and who was not. So it, it's that, that potential bias is, is kind of removed. And then the study was published in a peer reviewed journal, meaning people outside of Burt and his bees reviewed the study and deemed it good and worthy of being published. So, and the other the other thing that gives me confidence is that they compared it to to Cetaphil. Um, so you have you have some control in there to a product that we're all kind of familiar with. We all sort of know how it performs. Even though the authors are consultants for Burt's for Burt's Bees, um, I don't you know I don't I think some of that a lot of that bias is is removed by the way the study was done. So that that makes me more confident in it. 
Um, but again, any product can irritate anybody. Um, so these aren't foolproof, but they offer an option to those of you who find that you just can't tolerate anything. These are worth considering. They are cruelty free, which many of you are, you know, are going to be enthusiastic about. But anyways, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.